Hey, it's Buck. Welcome to the car sessions. The Honda sessions. That's what we'll call them. Um, anyway, so I was asked to do a video on... Um, actually, no, I was inspired to do a video on ear training for sound people. So live sound people are people working on soundtracks. And I don't know every frequency, but this is how I started to do it and I got better at it over the years. I would um, be mixing a live show. This is around 1990. 6, 97, 98, and every time I'd hear feedback, like on, a, on the sound system, I would go, oh, I'm going to grab my 31-tone disc, I had a CD beside me, and I'd find the closest frequency to that. And I kept discovering that feedback occurs first, for most part, between 1 and 2K. And so, so I got used to listening to the different tones. Um, I also figured out a way, like, you know, reading books and stuff like that, listening to a bunch of materials, um, how to train your ears. You, you break up the sound spectrum into five basic groups, boomy, boxy, nasally, harsh, and piercing. So those are onomatopoeias. Onomata, I can't spell it. Anyway, uh, they sound like they are. So boomy's got a very boomy, low-frequency character. That'd be the lows. Boxy is aw, nasally, eh. And then harsh and pure sing. So if you take those five basic areas and you you just separate them, you can quickly identify a particular frequency problem, whether it's on your uh, audio timeline or live sound system. So here's what I did. I, I guess it's because I fell asleep in front of the TV as a teenager and they play that one kilohertz test tone. I had no idea what it was, but it went like that. So that's the tone it made. Here, I won't look. So if that's one kilohertz, then 2K must be... And 500 hertz must be... I can't really whistle 500 hertz. So in between there, if I hear a... You know, feedback frequency, I know approximately where it is. That being said, you can also tune your guitar without a tuner just by memorizing one kilohertz. Because the high B on the high E string is about 1K. Now, if you're playing alone, that's fine. You're close enough to, uh, you know, perfect uh, tuning. Well, there is no such thing as perfect tuning. <laughs> but um, if you're playing with others, you can all tune to that or just use a tuning fork or use an app or whatever, uh, or tuner or whatever. Here, a quick insert of a close-up of that B note I'm talking about. So that's pretty much what I do is I memorize 1K and 2K and 500 Hertz. And then I, uh, I, when I hear a particular uh, frequency issue anywhere, I'll sweep back and forth. I did this uh, sweeping thing before in one of my live sound videos where I listen to this, the problem and I sweep until it stops or goes down. And then I get used to where those sounds are. But if I hear something like, oh, oh, I know it's, or oh, 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 I know where it is approximately, according to the frequency app or any real-time analyzer. Now I, I use this app but I don't always use it. I mean sometimes my battery's dead or you know, I can't rely on that so I have to rely on my ears. So that's all I suggest is that you uh, memorize one kilohertz, memorize two kilohertz especially for live sound people. Memorize 500 hertz whether or not you can whistle it. Get the 31 critical bands on a recording like a mp3 player or your phone or whatever or a CD if you want to be totally retro. Uh, it's easier probably to put it on some sort of device. I've got this little uh, Walkman, digital Walkman. Anyway, so um, then I can listen to the tones and I can quickly find the tones. And I, you know, an app is probably good for that, for finding the tones too, um, or playing the tones and getting used to them. But I, I would suggest the 31 critical bands, the ones we're used to using for measurement. For example, if you memorize the sequence of numbers on a 31 band equalizer, it's 20, 20 25, 31.5, and then all the octaves from there. So those three numbers determine the whole number sequence. So get really fami familiar with your 31 band EQ, all the critical frequencies. Download the critical frequencies. I'm probably gonna make available a quick little uh, you know, collection of frequencies that you can I uh, can make online and then just put them in a little mp3 package as a download so you can download them all at once. And then um, just be aware of where low, low, mid, mid, upper, mid, and high are. Boomy, boxy, nasally, harsh, and piercing. 
And over time, you'll just get used to being able to find problems really quickly. So if you have uh, discussions with, uh, let's say you're working on a film soundtrack and you have discussions with the director, they might say, oh, that sounds a little harsh to me. It sounds too harsh. And then you're like, oh, harsh. Okay, so that's an upper middle problem, right? Uh, if they say it sounds really boxy, you know, it's a low mid problem. And so you're narrowing down your, your areas of uh, problems, right? Now, live sound system, the same thing. You know, you could have a... You could have feedback, you could have tonal issues with your sound system, right? So I tune by ear all the time, and every once in a while I just check with the frequency app just to make sure I'm still spot on and I can still whistle one, one kilohertz, you know, and 2K. Oh, my dog, she doesn't like when I do that so much. Anyway, that's a little bit on ear training, and I, I, hope, I hope this helps. Cheers for now. Please subscribe, and uh, I'm going to make more car videos because don't worry, I'm not out there. In Zombie Lander, <laughs> I'm just in the garage in my car. Anyway, cheers for now.